Why do I exist? Hello there, so I own a 3D printer, and I wondered whether or not I could do a better job than Lego of building Lego. Now clearly the answer to that is no, and in this video I'm going to show you precisely why your own printed Lego is crap. But I think you'll find this generally interesting, even if your plan isn't world domination through making your own Lego bricks. So I own a Da Vinci Junior 3D printer. It prints in a plastic called PLA. It was sold to me as a sort of out of the box printer. So, you know, when you buy a sort of paper printer, you just set it up and it prints. And a lot of uh, 3D printers require quite a bit of calibration and setting up beforehand. But this was sold as a printer that you just plug in and it works straight away. And you know what? That was pretty well true. And that printer is exactly what I'm going to use to try and print out my fake or Jake Lego. So I went to Thingiverse, which is a website which contains a lot of objects for 3D printing. Um, and I typed in Lego and there were a number of items that came up. I'm quite surprised at a number of the things that were actually listed up there, including Lego minifigures, which as far as I'm aware, um, have some kind of protection by Lego. But is it illegal to uh, upload the dimensions of a minifigure? Is it illegal to print it out actually in your own home? I'm not actually 100% sure. My object was to find a 2x4 Lego brick object that I could print out. So I found one, downloaded it, printed it out, out popped a 2x4 Lego brick. This is it. This is the Jake brick. I've decided I can use a special Jake cam now, can't I? And sort of zoom in on the brick and show you it. So this is the brick and you can see that well, actually from a distance to start with, it looks like a normal Lego brick, albeit a little bit overexposed because of where it is. Maybe I'll put it over here. If you get a little bit closer up, you can see little ridges on the top of the brick there. And they are basically the lines of filament that come out of my 3D printer. So unlike real Lego, which is molded as in they squirt plastic inside like a cake tin, with these bricks, they've actually been printed like a giant snake. Well, a snake with breaks in. The studs look pretty good. Now, the printer's detail isn't such that I could write Jake on the studs of these bricks, let alone Lego. So there's no chance of me doing that. You can see it juts out at the bottom. It's maybe slightly bigger on one side than the other. So it hasn't gone perfectly well, has it? And probably the elephant in the room is that this brick is a rather disgusting sort of white colour. On the underside of the brick, you can see a different stud design. I wonder if they did this because it's easier to print or because this doesn't infringe on Lego's patents. Again, it doesn't look that neat on the bottom, but you know, for a first ever print out of a Lego item, I'm extremely happy with that. Maybe Jake's Bricks is going to be uh, a success after all. So there are a few tests I can do on this little brick to see whether or not Jake's Bricks is going to take off. And the first was a resounding success. So I can confirm that if you tread on this brick with bare feet, it really hurts. Ow! The other superficial test is that from a distance, it looks like a Lego brick. And you know what? If you're feeling it in your hand, I think you'd have to be very professional to know that that wasn't. A Lego brick. Now the other thing is clutch power. When it first came out of the printer it wouldn't attach to anything but it does work, it does stick to other Lego bricks so that is also a bonus. We're well on the way to starting our own fake Lego company. That is if you're happy to use this brick in specific ways. So for example these studs at the either side they're really good. You can stick things on those but the ones in the middle aren't so good and you'd have a bit of difficulty using all eight of these studs. So you can use it, just use it with care. This has kind of given me a huge amount of respect for the Lego manufacturing process. I believe Lego bricks are manufactured to within a tenth of a millimetre or something accuracy. This clearly is nowhere near that. Um, so it's amazing that Lego bricks are as reliable and easy to put together, yet simultaneously don't fall apart um, as they are. This is incredibly inferior in that respect. But say for argument's sake that 
you know, I wanted to go down this route. Maybe I can perfect my manufacturing technique and we could make a Lego set. So it took 40 minutes to print out this 4x2 Lego brick, which now I look at it again, looks a bit squashed. What do you think? Is that the right size? Let's dream big. Um, why don't we try and make, print out the Millennium Falcon UCS, the new one that's like 700 quid or something. How many parts does that contain? Oh, that's, that's only 7,513 parts. <laughs> divided by 24. Uh, uh, 209 days of continuous printing to print out the Millennium Falcon UCS. And it would all be in one colour because my 3D printer only prints in one colour, whichever reel you've got in there. How much is the PLA for my printer? Oh, it's only 600 grams. So 13,150 grams divided by 600 means I need 22 rolls of filament. Print it in black, that's the cheapest. A roll of filament's 22 pounds. So times 22 uh, uh, is 482 pounds in filament. 482 pounds of filament, 200 and something days worth of electricity, and the machine will probably need maintenance in that time. I, this is fast becoming not very economical or making much sense, isn't it? I don't think I'll be printing a Millennium Falcon. So maybe sets aren't the way to go. Maybe we can't make enough bricks to do that. Maybe we could start printing Jake minifigures. So I downloaded a minifigure model from Thingiverse and printed that out. It was quite good actually. It printed out the sort of individual parts and I was quite surprised. I thought usually my printer isn't that good at printing small detailed items. So I peeled the items off the printer bed and uh, set to work at putting my little Lego minifigure together. Unfortunately, there, there were some issues. Let me turn Jake Cam on again. From a distance again, he, he looks like a sort of incomplete Lego minifigure, doesn't he? Um, but actually, if you look closer up, his torso and his bottom half, they don't quite meet up, uh, but I can, I can live with that. Um, his head is very stiff, and now that I've got it on, I will never, ever get it back off again. He's only got one leg, and that leg is kind of bowed in a little bit. Um, but perhaps the saddest thing is he doesn't have a face. He's also missing his uh, left arm. Uh, he's got no hands. And this arm is actually only half an arm. When I was taking it off the kind of plastic thing that it had printed on, his arm snapped in half. And unfortunately, the recess in his arm for his hand is now not big enough to support a hand. So he's got no hands. Why does 3D printed Lego man exist? So it's fair to say that that wasn't a huge success either. Does he stick to a Lego brick? It fits perfectly. Well, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? It, it didn't work. Have you got a 3D printer? Are you going to give this a go? Maybe better quality 3D printers are better at printing out Lego. So... I think the moral of the story is let's leave the Lego manufacturing to Lego because it's very difficult, time consuming and expensive and you need the right machinery to do it properly. This is definitely not an economical way to make Lego sets. Anyway, that's it for the moment. I've stolen that off another YouTuber. Uh, what do I usually say? Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe if you like my reviews and I shall see you next time for another video.